Hi guys, welcome to my channel once again. This is Battle with Ola. My name is Mijola Olua. Thank you for tuning in once again. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to dress up as a female lawyer in Nigeria for court. How to dress up as a female lawyer, as a litigation lawyer, as a lawyer, a female lawyer that's appearing in court. It became important to make this video because I suddenly realized that, you know, when I was going to law school, I did not have this kind of content, you know, for myself. So I'm hoping that, you know, if a law school student that's about to be called to the bar or someone that's just received their notification of results and probably their call to the bar date would watch this video and it will provide some insight for them. And it is my hope as well that, you know, existing lawyers might even watch this video and find some value in it. So let's talk about how to dress up for court as a Nigerian lawyer, a female lawyer to be precise. I think the most important thing uh, to note is that moderation is key. So there are so many, there's what the RPC says, there's what we were taught in our professional ethics and skills classes, um, there are rules that we've observed, you know, for law school dinners and whatnot, and then there are things that, you know, are obtainable in real life, but essentially, moderation is key. So there's um, a world of difference regarding what you can get away with and what you might not get away with depending on the court, the jurisdiction where you find yourself. So it's important to uh, allow moderation be your watchword. So of course you can make up to court, it, it could be very light like mine, or it could be heavier than this, depending on your own preference. But make sure that moderation is key. And make sure that what you're, whatever you're doing is not going to turn off some judge. You know, so that's why you notice that each time I talk about how to do one thing or the other in court, I always emphasize the fact that you need to study the body language of the court where you're practicing, where you frequent, the court that you frequent. You need to understand, you know, the mindset of the judge, how they, how they think and how they arrive at decisions. It will help you a lot. So it will help you, you know, avoid a lot of drama, embarrassment and trouble whatsoever. So, uh, for instance, my hair is quite bogus and it's not cut compliant, like I like to say. So I'm going to tie it to the back. I have a rubber band already when i have bogus here like this and i have to go to court i always have a rubber band handy so i can tie it up to the back because your hair is supposed to be away from your face and the sides of your head it's supposed to go to the back so that you know your wig can sit comfortably on it and you know no hair is coming up in front very important then my earrings for some courts it's quite bogus as well, so I'm going to remove it. I have, you know, a pair of court compliant earrings here that I'm going to be exchanging them for. Of course, you can wear jewelry, but it's supposed to be moderate jewelry. So, uh, necklace, you can. Of course, your colorize is going to cover that. And of course, wrist watch, you could have a wristband or bracelet if you please. Um, some cuts allow you, some cuts might not. And of course, your shoes are supposed to be black in color. It could have heels or it could be flat, but black shoe cover shoe cover shoe very important black cover shoe and of course your dress is supposed to be black i prefer to use dark because you know these days lawyers get away with a lot of things and honestly i'm not down for the black 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 you know uh color that uh we prefer in this jurisdiction i feel like it's quite enslaving uh so if um the colors are you know sober enough because it's a sober profession if the colors are sober enough, I think that it should be allowed. But essentially, black is the order of the day. But if you have, you know, navy blue or dark blue too, sometimes in some courts they are allowed dark gray, you know, dark green. Yeah, I've seen a prosecutor wearing dark gray before when I practiced in um, Edo State. So yeah, that. But essentially, just wear dark, dark. So you're supposed to, you could wear a suit which would include, you know, black skirt, black suit, and then a white camisole. I noticed that in my current jurisdiction, a lot of senior lawyers wear dark camisole, black camisole inside. That's not how we were taught, but honestly, I'm not about the colors. So just make sure that you appear sober and uh, make sure that you're wearing what you can get away with, essentially. So yeah, it's supposed to be white camisole in the suit or you wear a dark dress, a black dress. I'm, I'm wearing a black dress and uh, I'm going to, you know, tie up my hair, change my earrings and then we would wear the wig and gown and color it proper.
So there you have it. I'm now looking cut compliant here. Yeah? So the first piece of clothing for female lawyers is the collarette. The collarette. It's a white piece of clothing. This is how it looks like. And uh, it goes on your neck. <laughs> for me, it looks like a child's bib, like a baby's bib. When you're feeding a baby, remember about that. I'm not going to go into the rationale for any of the pieces of clothing that make up a lawyer's uh, dressing in Nigeria. I'm not going to go into the rationale behind them, but I'm just going to be show you, showing you how to wear them and what I think they do. So the collarette, what does the collarette do? You could leave me comments in the comment section if you think that it does anything in particular. So make sure that those two pieces in front of your collarette are centralized. Make sure that they are centralized. Ordinarily, the collarette has a velcro, a velcro on the inner inside at the back. It has a velcro, or some have buttons, you know, probably some have zips, just for you to close it up at the back. So you're supposed to finish it by closing up the velcro or the zip or the button around your neck, around the back of your neck, making sure that those two pieces are centralized. So yeah. So there you have it. Make sure you iron your collarette. It's very important. It makes you look very neat and sophisticated. Trust me. So after your collarette, you're supposed to tuck it in. I know that some people wear theirs like this and then they go to court. It's not. That's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to tuck in your collarette and leave these two pieces out. So I'm going to tuck it in right now. So you see what I meant when I said that, you know, even if you were wearing a piece of necklace or jewelry on your neck, the collarette would cover it. So this is how it looks. Most courts have robing rooms, so you do not have to worry. If you can't dress up from home, you can always go to the robing room in the court premises and dress up. And if you have a companion, it, they could come handy by, you know, smoothening your collarette for you, especially at the back. I'm going to show you what my back looks like. I hope it's neat because there's nobody to smoothen it for me around here. So yeah, so that's how it looks. You have um, worn your collarette. The next thing you wear is your gown. This is the lawyer's gown. The lawyer's gown. Front, back. Yeah, so you wear your gown on your collarette. Just like this. Very simple and very easy. I think the most important rationale that I can think of is that dressing like this makes lawyers look dignified and probably older than their age, which is an assumption of wisdom and knowledge, you know, as it were. Of course, that's not always the case, but I think that that's like the easiest or the most solid or plausible rationale that I can think of because, I mean, we are in the, um, we are in a very hot region. We shouldn't be dressing like this, honestly. But that's what we have. So this is your gown. I'm quite short, so <laughs> so this is the gown. And then the last piece is the wig. The wig. This is the lawyer's wig. It's different from an SCN's wig and different from the judge's wig. This is a lawyer's wig. So it goes on your head. Last. It's the last piece of clothing. And I think that you know. It's quite logical that it's the last that you put on because, you know, if you had put on your wig and then you're struggling with your collarette or you're struggling with your gown, it could fall off and, you know, that's not tidy, that's not necessary. So, it's the last thing that comes on your head, like, more like the crown, you know, crowning your dressing with your wig. So, yes. So, this is what I meant by no air in front, no air on the sides. Everything tucked to the back, very important. There are actually judges that frown at, you know, pieces of air flowing everywhere. I've been in court once and the judge had to chastise the lawyer that her air was too bogus. And he actually gave her like two weeks. So he asked her, oh, Mrs. So-so-so, when did you make this air? She was like, I made it so-so. So I'm giving you till Easter. It was, Easter. it was close to Easter period that time. So he said, I'm giving you till Easter to take down this air because, you know, it was too bogus and it was flying out, you know, of her. Uh, Wig. Another thing is that if you make a bogus hairstyle, your wig might actually fall off. There are so instances where lawyers' wigs are falling off in court. Judges frown at it a lot. Very important. 
So your wig should not fall off. Your wig should be on your head in court at all times. It should be on your head. So yeah, this is my wig and gown and color it. So when you sit down in court, the gown tends to shift because it's not buttoned down. So it tends to shift and, you know, tilt to one side or the other. So as you're standing up and addressing the court, you continue to struggle with your gown. So you continue to adjust it. So yeah, this is it. Wig, gown, color it. This is how to dress as a lady lawyer in Nigeria. I'll try to show you know, my full um, my full uh, image so that you can see what it actually looks like. And of course, the court shoes, court compliant shoes always. I've now slipped into my court heels and that's why I'm appearing taller in the video. I'm going to tilt it. I'm going to tilt my camera so that, you know, you can see the full picture, but this is how you're supposed to look in court. Now, it's important for you not to wear contraband under your gown because this gown can expose you. You know, there's no button. It's just open. I know that there was a time that I went to court and one of my seniors was actually wearing a fuchsia pink camisole under her suit. I saw it, but because, you know, she had tucked in her color, it, the judge did not see it because, you know, the judges are far off sometimes, so they can't really see what's... Um, what each person is wearing but what if you think that they will not see you and they happen to see you that day so better be safe than sorry and i know that i've shared this uh um experience a lot in person let me share it in this video as well there was a time that i went to the court of appeal and you know there was this lawyer she stood up to address the court and the court had to ask her that madam do you have a suit under that gown because they could not see a suit button so she said yes and they were like and she showed it to the court and the court was like why is it not buttoned so button your suit and then she tried and it wasn't buttoning so the judge the presiding judge was like oh probably the suit has gotten smaller because i know that ladies don't like to be told that they've grown bigger so that's what this it was really embarrassing for her that day because they had to wait for her to button the suit before the trial went on and even when she was leaving the court and had done a matter the presiding judge, I wouldn't know if she had anything personal against her, but she stopped her again and said, Madam, button that suit again before you leave this court. So it's important to avoid embarrassment as much as possible. So just dress properly, you know, moderation is key and just be safe than sorry. So yes, may please the court, OM Living Stones for the appellant. My Lord, we have a motion before your Lordship this morning. It's dated and filed. Yes, a fuller picture. That's all I have for you in this video. I will always see you in my very next video. Toodles!